Hi, I'm Joe Dinefer. Thank you for joining us for Backboards Off The Wall. Let's start with a statistic from top professional players. Did you know that 75% of them regularly practiced on backboards as children? We all know that hitting against a wall demands control and consistency, both essentials of solid tennis. But we also need to be aware that there's an inherent problem with most walls. On straight flat walls, whether made out of brick, concrete, wood, or fiberglass, the trajectory of the ball is radically different than real tennis rallying. I can safely say that every single ground stroke hit from the baseline in tennis has an arc, no doubt about it. However, hit a normal ground stroke against a flat wall and the ball rebounds very differently. Minimal arc or it actually rebounds downward slightly off the wall. Take a look. Martha and I are hitting on the court and you can clearly see that the ball is arcing over the net. Against a straight wall, the ball generally rebounds downward and lands considerably shorter than normal. The result? Players try to hit harder just to get the ball to reach them. Take a look at a tennis playing friend, the one and only Bijou. You see, when you swing harder than normal to increase the distance of the rebound, you get in bad swinging habits and lose control. If you overswing like Bijou, practicing on straight backboards can hurt more than help. That said, there is a solution if you only have a straight wall available for practice. Just let the ball land or bounce two times before hitting it. Let's watch. You will gain more time to prepare and not overpower your shots. But just be aware that while this type of hitting will help your tennis, it is still not quite ideal since the rhythm of one bounce tennis is obviously different. Plus, hitting off two bounces means that you will unrealistically hit all ground strokes below your waist. In order to create a realistic arc, the wall should ideally be tilted just about 15 degrees. Now to demonstrate the games and drills in this production, we will be using a backboard that is both tilted and curved so that even balls hit to the outside sections of the wall will rebound slightly to extend rallies and practice opportunities. You may not have a dual curved wall like this one, but if you are building a wall for yourself, remember the 15 degree guideline. It makes a world of difference. Let's watch and see. On a 15 degree angled backboard, you can clearly see the difference. Whether it's Martha Elkins, a former professional tour player, or my 10 year old daughter Kalindi, the benefits are the same. The ball rebounds upwards off the wall and lands further, amazingly close to the timing of a normally controlled baseline rally in tennis. Since we called this program Off the Wall, we better get started with some actual games and drills. But first, one more important point. In a normal tennis game, you'll hit the ball about 150 times per hour. Against a ball machine, throwing the ball every four seconds, you'll hit about 650 balls in an hour, including downtime for ball pickup. But on a backboard, you get the most practice by far and can hit up to a whopping 30 balls per minute or 1,800 balls per hour and using just one ball. Have fun. In this section, we'll share dozens of exercises to make your practices more fun and more productive. We will not cover the often boring basic exercises such as hitting 10 forehands in a row and then 10 backhands in a row. On the other hand, we'll offer creative ideas for players of varying levels to get more out of their backboard experience. Let's get rolling. Just like driving a car or flying a plane, you have to first learn the controls. Depending on the angle of the wall, timing is a key. I suggest throwing and catching with a lot of footwork to start things off. Use different types of balls depending on the skill level of the player.
But keep in mind that vertical walls offer less time to react and angled walls will be more realistic, although still faster than a normal baseline rally. Get used to the timing of the rebound, both up close and further back, knowing that on most courts, the distance from the baseline to the back fence is 21 feet. Adding the standard 18 feet from the service line to the baseline, you end up with 39 feet from the service line to a wall against the back fence. Exactly the distance from the baseline to the net on any tennis court. I have to admit, we had a little fun with Bijou on this one. Although he's funny to watch, the learning outcome is important. You see, even before using rackets, if you can add even more intensity to footwork and positioning, then any athlete will play better. Put a belt, strap, or rope around your elbows and chest. This way you'll have to move more and reach less. With two players, you can play a game. Just specify whether you can throw into the entire board or a smaller area and also whether you can catch on one bounce or out of the air as well. Tossing and catching while moving laterally or spinning in a circle after each toss are more movement variations to help any player improve. Of course, spinning just once like Martha is showing is helping. Spinning twice can work, but spinning more like Bijou tried is not recommended. Another terrific idea is to place a bell at the side of the playing area. Throw the ball, move to ring the bell, and then recover to catch the ball you've just thrown. First try this exercise with two bounces, then speed up to one bounce. And for the most challenging variation, give this idea a try without a bounce. Now that's a tough exercise. In addition to tennis, backboards also offer great practice and training opportunities for other sports. Soccer for kicking, passing, heading and control, baseball for throwing and fielding, and even basketball for ball passing and catching. Most of the previous exercises can also be performed with rackets. One word of advice is to start off close to the wall and then hit with backspin and a short swing length. You will benefit greatly from the control skills you gain and naturally improve angles, dinks, drops and volleys, all great skills to better tennis. Think of these shots as the basics of driving a car or flying an airplane. Master the basics first and then you can jump to a long cross-country drive or even flying over the ocean. Once you master basic control and get a feel for the wall you're using, it's time to back up and hit regular topspin ground strokes. Here are some varieties to try. First, for added control, slow it down and hit on two bounces. Then, for even more control, slow it down further and hit on three. Once you have control with your ground strokes, try this exercise. No, not the way Bijou is demonstrating. Look at Martha. She hits and spins in a circle continuing in the direction she is following through. This will give you extra feel for body rotation into your shots and also help you control your shots better. After all, if you can control them and spin in between each hit, think how easy it will be to control the ball under normal conditions. We all know that net clearance and depth on ground strokes are keys to successful play. In this simple yet challenging exercise, Martha has set up some lines to challenge herself. The baseline is her own service line, but her ground strokes must land behind the rubber throwdown lines to be in play. She is working for consistency and trying to hit 10 in a row.
This next exercise is by far the most challenging yet. It requires a ton of control and feel for the ball and the racket. I suggest starting up close and hitting slowly with your forehand first and then on the backhand side as well. Next, try mixing it up on both sides. Mix in topspin and backspin on both ground strokes. First up close and then backing up with full swings. One important instructional tip I should mention at this time. To perform this exercise, use your non-rocket hand to prepare the angle of the racket face. The proper grip will follow automatically once the angle is correctly prepared. Another great way to practice on backboards is to drill the volley. This is particularly where angled walls can make a huge difference. Take a look. On angled walls, the ball comes off the wall with an arc, making volley practice especially realistic. As compared to flat walls, where you have to hit the ball high up on the wall in order to create a rebounding arc that allows continuous play. In this section, we'll run through some basic and not so basic volley exercises to give you a bunch of options to choose from in your practice sessions. So let's play volley wall, and yes, spell wall with a W. Depending on your skill level, start off close with control volleys and then back up. I suggest adding some variations like catch and hit right off the bat. Even more challenging is catching the ball on one side and hitting it with the other. And finally, take a look at Bijou trying the hardest one of them all. Volley against the wall, catch the ball, tap it up off the edge of the racket and then volley it into the wall again. He makes it look easy, but you can be sure it took quite a lot of practice to get that one. Now look at some ways that Bijou adds extra movement and lowers his center of gravity during his volley practice sessions. First, try touching the butt of the racket to the ground. Next, to get even lower, try reaching down and touching the ground with your hand. Great effort, Bijou. We all know that volleying a tennis ball is not just hitting the ball to the same place. In this exercise, hit side to side, alternating forehands and backhands with a realistic amount of footwork. Next, try working variations of depth. Start out about 20 feet from the wall. After each volley, move in one or two steps until you're close enough and then go back again. The key to this exercise is controlling the ball by keeping the racket strings going forwards towards the wall. Don't swing around like in a ground stroke. In fact, take another look at Bijou. Once you can control your volleys, you can even sit down and control this shot. Give it a try. It's a real litmus test for control. And yes, in case you were wondering, you can also do this exercise lying down and with a partner. Cooperate together by both sitting and volleying together off the wall. Now let's move to one of the most exciting shots in today's tennis, the swinging volley. This is one shot where the extra time and arc offered by an angled wall can really make a difference. Once you've mastered this skill, try mixing it up with regular and swinging volleys. Now that's quite a skill to master. This is the final section of this footage on backboards. In this portion, we will demonstrate games and exercises that are definitely winners. Unusual drills that are both unique and skill building at the same time. The first game of this section is one of the few exercises we will demonstrate that absolutely requires an angled wall. Serving and volleying against a flat wall just doesn't work. But against an angled wall it becomes a challenging and enjoyable fast-paced drill that will quickly improve any player's serve and volley game in a regular match.
An often overlooked game with a backboard is to play a set of singles. It goes like this. Bounce and hit a ground stroke, and then try to hit five in a row above the net line. If you succeed, you've won the first point, and the score is 15 love. Keep playing until a whole set is completed. Another option is to start with the serve and then hit four more. If you are more advanced and this is too easy, set a tougher goal such as hitting 10 in a row to really challenge your consistency and control. In this exercise, rubber lines are laid down to divide the backboard rebounds into two halves. The rules are simple. Try to hit 10 in a row, but you must hit the ball on the opposite side with the opposite shot. For example, when the ball lands on the backhand side, a forehand must be hit, and when it lands on the forehand side, you have to hit a backhand. The idea of this next exercise is to hit a sequence of different shots with control. As you can see, Bijou is really struggling with this one, although he is coming up with some creative variations. Now Martha shows how it should look. First a chip ground stroke, then a topspin ground stroke, and then a volley, all done in sequence. See if you can hit 15 balls in a row with this sequence of shots. If you can pull this one off, you have a lot of racket and ball control. Well done. Now let's look at Bijou demonstrating a drill that most court clowns don't have a chance at successfully performing. This two ball juggle takes a lot of control to master, but once you've got it, it's guaranteed that your playing level and overall feel for the ball will have improved. After two, how about three? Very impressive, Bijou. There you go, three balls. Fantastic. This next one is a competitive control game for two players. Using rubber throwdown lines, create a middle alley that's about six feet wide. Like other cooperative games, set a rule that the ball cannot land past the service line, which now becomes the baseline for this backboard drill. Players alternate hits, and the ball must land in the middle alley. Players should get creative in this game and use varieties of spin and also hit ground strokes or volleys, depending on their position. In this next cooperative game, two players alternate hitting ground strokes to ensure safety by getting each player out of the way of the other's swing, as well as to increase movement and recovery. A bell is placed behind them at the net. After each shot, each player runs back and rings the bell. Try for ten in a row and then increase from there. Other options without the engaging sound of the bell are to touch the net. or run and touch a foot inside the doubles alley on either side to emphasize lateral movement. Here's a cooperative exercise for two players as well. They simply share a racket, alternate hits, and see how many ground strokes they can hit in a row. Then, for an even greater challenge, give it a try with volleys. And finally, for the biggest challenge, alternate two volleys and then two ground strokes. This is a tough one. Great job. In this next highly visual cooperative game, use Velcro on hula hoops to create super targets. Pair players with one throwing into the wall, the other listens for the ball to hit the wall and then quickly spins and hits a ground stroke. Award one point for hitting the wall and five points for hitting the ball inside one of the hoops. Like many of the exercises we have demonstrated, this one works nicely for volleys as well, although the players will have to spin even more quickly than before. 
with several pairs of players. Have each pair throw one ball and then give the next team a chance. Play until one team reaches a designated number of points, such as 21. Here's an exercise similar to the last one in that two players are involved and one is throwing while the other hits with a racket. But this is where the similarity ends. Now the two players are competing. The throwing player must catch the ball and then has two seconds and only one step to throw the ball just caught. You might be surprised that more often than not, the player catching and throwing the ball will compete quite evenly with the hitting player. This product bonus section will feature our new bag of tricks, now featuring 10 quick fix products to fix the biggest problems that tennis players face. The bag of tricks is one of those items that really will solve more problems than perhaps you even knew you had. The main thing is when using each of the products to use them for five to 10 hits and then take those guidance systems or training aids off and try to maintain that same feel, whether it be the serve, the volley, or your ground strokes for you to play better tennis. The first tool in the bag of tricks that we'll explain is the telescopic serve doctor. We all know that the serve is one of those shots in tennis that mainly people have trouble with with an erratic toss. So what you do is simply stick any ball to the Velcro, hold it up in the right position for the server, and let them get a feel for where they should make contact. And then right away, they get a better feel for where they need to place their toss to have a more consistent serve. One of the biggest problems in tennis with the most important shot, namely the serve, is that people have trouble tossing accurately and consistently. Many of them just toss way too high. And then, uh, by the time the ball comes down, it's going through the air so quickly, it's difficult to strike. A lower toss is greatly recommended to control your tossing problems. Here we have the Toss Doctor. Two of them come in your kit, and you just put it in your hand and toss it up softly, catching it again in the tossing hand. If you throw it softly, you'll be able to catch it. If you throw it too hard, you lose control. The point is a soft toss, catch it, and then that translates immediately into a softer toss on your serve, more accuracy with your toss, and a better serve. The next item in the bag of tricks also relates to the serve, although it's good for other strokes, such as getting a feel for grips on the volley or ground strokes. It's called the grip doctor. The problem with the serve is this one. You understand that it should be continental. You understand you should hold a continental grip to allow you maximum wrist flexion and working the wrist for spin. But you have trouble. It looks like this. You start off continental, you shift your grip, and you end up hitting this flat, pushy type of serve. To fix that problem, you put on the grip doctor. It holds your grip in place and merely hit your serve. The grip doctor comes in two parts. The first one goes on the grip, wraps around and sticks to itself. The second one requires the player to have their palm upwards. The index finger goes through the hole, wraps around the wrist, and then the Velcro locks them in to whatever grip they're trying to hold. One skill in learning tennis is the development of spin, whether it's top spin on the ground strokes, back spin for drop shots, slice on the serve, kick on the serve, whatever kind of spin you want. It takes players months and years sometimes to develop that skill. The spin doctor is telescopic and it easily helps people get a feel for spin in just seconds. Take a look. Lindy will hit a top spin forehand, just brushing up, creating spin, and then you can self-bounce a ball. Once you get the feel for it, there we go, and brushing up. 
The telescopic spin doctor is also excellent to help people get a better feel for various spins on the serve, whether it be a slice or even the kick serve. Within minutes, Kalindi got an initial feel for her kick serve, which translated quickly into being able to hit a kick serve within days. And now you'll take a look. Now I'd like to demonstrate the volley arrow, which coincidentally works for any shot where you have a short blocking motion whereby you want the strings to finish in the direction you just hit the ball. Many people make the mistake of swinging around too much. And here we see Kalindi just controlling it. And finishing with the volley arrow pointing in the direction she just hit the ball. The foam volley arrow helps people hit with control on both sides. Squeeze through the throat of any racket. They get to hit both forehand volleys or backhand volleys. And just check where the arrow is pointing. The bag of tricks also includes the volley doctor. This is for the players who hit their volleys and drop their wrists like this. And all you do is slide the volley doctor up onto the grip and then get the player to hold hammer grip right up top and then Kalinda you slide your hand down as far as you can. Pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Keep going. Hold your grip there. And then let's hit some volleys. Now she'll feel that the racket head cannot drop, thus gaining control for the feel she needs on her volley. Sorry, back in. And again. Good ball. One of the biggest challenges that players have is making up their minds, in other words, making decisions early. So we have a set of four numbered cones in your bag of tricks to help you with that problem. The drill will demonstrate is placing one of each of the four cones in the four quadrants. Kalindi has to call out the number that she's aiming for before she hits the shot. Three. The next item in the bag of tricks is very practical. A dry erase clipboard. Papers on one side, but on the other side you've got your tennis court and you can show players that if they hit the ball cross court that they should recover to the right position. Right there, off center. Very important, very practical in all situations. I'd like to demonstrate the arm pocket developer now in particular. It's great for returning serve because most people make the mistake of having way too big a backswing to hit that critical shot. We wrap it around Kalindi. And your arm slides in here. And we wrap her in to eliminate the possibility of her taking a huge backswing. Let's see her hit some balls. One of the major problems with the forehand ground stroke is people who use just their right arm if they're right-handed to hit the shot. There's no unit turn, there's no upper body rotation. In fact, the non-racket hand needs to work with the hitting arm in unison. 
Take a look now at the forehand fixer, which attaches both hands together. Okay, there you go. With Velcro. It's okay. And now I'll toss Kalindi a few forehands. And you'll see her racket and her arm back up just a little bit more, working together. This bonus section is an addition to backboards off the wall that should really get your creative tennis juices flowing. We'll demonstrate one of our newest creations here at On Court Off Court, the Mini Champ Portable Backboard. It's constructed with the same angles and curves of the full-size, dual-curved Rally Champion backboard we used in the earlier portions of this tape. But, being portable, it opens up a whole new world of additional drills and exercises. In this section, we'll share about a dozen games and drills using fairly advanced players to demonstrate. But before starting, I want to clarify that the Mini Champ adapts to almost all levels of play and types of shots and play situations. We'll start with a section on singles drills, then move to doubles drills, and then finish with a few extra creative drills that adapt to specific practice situations that are guaranteed to be both productive and good for endless hours of fun. The drills in this first section are ideal for two or three players to practice in a rotation. Remember that in match play, you can take nearly 30 seconds between points. Rotations allow for players to practice going through between point rituals as well. Please also keep in mind that even if the server misses hitting the mini champ part of the time, he or she will be practicing with more focus than usual since practicing with specific visual targets have been proven to raise playing level during actual match play. This first drill has dozens of variations in and of itself. While watching, consider that the mini champ can be moved to any number of positions in both service boxes and also set at various angles in each position to simulate a player returning serve to various parts of the court. In other words, it can return to your forehand, your backhand, or straight up the middle. In this example, our players are rotating through and are allowed one serve each. They score one point if their serve rebounds off the mini champ back over the net. Then they receive an additional point by volleying the return over the net and into the singles court. Then they can receive a third point if they also hit one of the two targets we have set up on the side tees. Another variation is to let the return from the mini champ bounce and then attack it by hitting a ground stroke. And, of course, this same exercise can be focused on doubles by just playing the point in the doubles half court and taking away the second side T target. The second theme of this section is the approach and attack sequence. In this first example, the players are fed a short ball that they hit into the mini champ. Like the last set of exercises, you can create a game by awarding one point for hitting the wall, another point for volleying the rebound, and then a third point for hitting the angled target with the volley. You can also feed deeper and hit a deep attacking ground stroke. In this situation, they get in the habit of moving forwards in anticipation of a weak return. Get one point for hitting the wall, a second point for hitting the short ground stroke into the open court, and a third point for hitting a cross court winner into the newly formed target circle. If you don't have a feeder, you can also have players self-bounce their first shot, a technique that forces them to improve 
their racket acceleration, an important skill for the improving player in today's world of tennis. In this second section, we'll focus on double specific practice drills. Again, like in all sections, we are just demonstrating some of the endless possibilities. Just move the portable wall to another position on the court, or vary the angle of the return to create dozens of different exciting practice situations of your own. Please also keep in mind that one additional benefit of the mini champ practice session you might try out is that it speeds up play. It forces the attacking player to move faster than normal. This makes the adjustment back to real time in real play situations a little dramatic. Players tell us that they feel faster and more alert than ever. They'll have more time in real play after practicing with the mini champ. In this set of exercises, the mini champ replaces the receiver. The server is allowed up to three serves to hit the mini champ or it is counted as a double fault for that point. When the ball rebounds over the net, the three players play out the point with just one adjustment. The side with two players must hit into the doubles half court where the live opponent is playing. Play each game with regular scoring in each service box, except Start the serving team down, love 30 in each game. At the end of each game, have the players rotate around one position. Each person keeps score individually, and the first to win six games wins the set. Some other variations include giving the serving team an immediate point if the server volleys the rebound off the mini champ. In this drill sequence, I also suggest not allowing the server's partner to poach on the initial rebound. There are several ways to help you improve your poaching skills using the mini champ. The first is to set it up to rebound the serve. In this sequence, the server's partner is poaching on the rebound from the mini champ portable backboard. Points are then played out into the half court of the server's partner. Another variation is a cooperative drill where we place the mini champ in the position of the receiver's partner. This time the rules are that the receiver must set up the poacher. The point only starts when the serve is in the box, the receiver sets up the poacher, and the poacher volleys into the mini champ. After the rebound comes back over the net, then the point is played out competitively. Rotate players from position to position. With two players, you can also work on poaching. Just serve into the mini champ and then volley away the poach to a target area that you can create and that becomes a winning shot. We included this portion called parallel doubles since it is widely understood that players who move up and back as a team are not vulnerable to the opposing team angling shots between them. In this first variation, the mini champ portable backboard is placed in the middle of the court inside the service line. The receiving team sets up in a parallel defensive position on or near the baseline. The rules are simple. No drop shots are allowed from the serving team. The receiving team must stay in a defensive court position and cannot cross in front of the service line. If the serve hits the mini champ, it counts as a fault. And if the serving team hits the mini champ out of the air, once the ball is in play, the point is won by them immediately. But in order to get this advantage, the player on the serving team who hit the ball must have both feet inside the service line when striking their offensive shot. The only exception in this rule is if they are lobbed and hit the mini champ with an overhead. An additional variation adds even more excitement and allows the serving team to win a bonus point as well. It goes like this. If the serving team volleys into the mini champ and the ball rebounds over the net, they can try to hit the mini champ again. If they succeed, it counts as two points in their favor. 
The purpose is to get the serving team to focus on penetrating their shots through the middle of their opponents. The previous two sections have focused on hitting the mini champ in sequences for either singles or doubles situations and playing the ball off the rebound with a different type of shot. In this final section, we'll demonstrate some additional ideas for using the mini champ to isolate and practice specific shots repetitively, whether they be ground strokes, overheads, or volleys. If you're like me, once you get started, you'll quickly see that the ideas are practically endless. Here's a way to practice ground strokes. Just treat the mini champ like a regular backboard, but in a very realistic on-court setting. We just opened a folding table and placed the mini champ on top of it. In addition to ground strokes, the players can work on their volleys as well. Now our players are working on their overheads. In this exercise, you can set up the mini champ as the target for their overheads to either side or down the middle for doubles. However, with the mini champ, our players not only try to hit the target, but also get to react and play the rebound as well. As a doubles drill, our players are competing until one team wins seven points, and then they can rotate positions. If the overhead hits the mini champ and rebounds over the net, one point is received. Or, whoever wins the point as it is played out can win a point as well. The only other rules are that the hitting team hitting the overhead cannot drop shot and the defending team cannot move inside the service line. And of course, if it's a bad feed, the players at the net are allowed to say reject and get another chance. Let's finish this set of drills combining a ball machine with our portable curved and angled mini backboard. This one concept alone could be expanded into hundreds of more drills, but we will leave that up to you to gradually create on your own. The basic idea is to angle the mini champ away from the hitter. A second player then reacts to the rebound and plays a different shot. It's a great way for doubles teams to get the rhythm of working together. In this simple example, we just have the ball machine feeding to one volleyer and the mini champ angled to the partner who then hits a reaction volley to the target area. If you have more than one team, just rotate positions after each five or ten balls are hit. You can even keep score and create a fun but competitive atmosphere. This video actually brings me back over 35 years. Since as a junior player, I loved hitting on walls. Yes, I admit it. I was the kid who broke the garage window panes repeatedly while trying to hit the tennis ball against the lower wooden section. When my mother had enough, it was off to the nearby schoolyard to hit against the brick walls of the building. So whether you have a straight wall, or a modern angled backboard. Try some of the games and drills we have just demonstrated and have fun. Thank you for joining us.